Denmark is quietly reshaping the balance of modern air defense. While much of Europe is still scrambling to replenish depleted missile stocks, Copenhagen is making a very deliberate move, one that signals how smaller nations intend to survive in a sky increasingly dominated by long-range threats. The Danish Ministry of Defense has now been cleared by the U.S. Defense Security Cooperation Agency to acquire 236 AMRAAM ER interceptors for its NASAM's air defense systems. The deal is worth up to $951 million, meaning each missile costs over $4 million more than the launchers themselves. At first glance, that price tag sounds absurd. Why would any nation spend more on the bullets than on the gun? But this is precisely how modern air defense economics work. The launcher, radar, and control modules of NASAMs are only part of the picture. The real cost and capability lies in the missiles themselves. For Denmark, this is not just an arms purchase. It is a strategic statement. To understand why, we need to recall what NASAMs actually is. Originally designed by Norway's Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace in partnership with Raytheon, the system is a flexible networked surface-to-air platform. It was built to fire the AIM-120 AMRAAM, the same missile used by NATO fighters, giving ground units access to a mature, combat-proven weapon with advanced guidance and high kill probability. Over time, NASAMs became the preferred medium-range air defense solution for many U.S. allies, including Norway, the Netherlands, Lithuania, and Ukraine. But the original AMRAAM missile had one limitation, range. Even the most advanced sea variants could intercept targets at around 25 to 30 kilometers in realistic conditions. That was sufficient in the 1990s when threats were slower and less coordinated. Today, with standoff glide bombs, drones, and cruise missiles attacking from all angles, the need for more reach is obvious. Enter the AMRAAM. This extended range missile is not a simple upgrade. It is a hybrid. Its rear section and rocket motor are borrowed from the RIM-162 ESSM, a naval interceptor designed to chase sea-skimming missiles at Mach 4. To this, engineers grafted the seeker and guidance section of the AIM-120C8, integrating the best of both designs. The result, a missile capable of reaching out to 60 kilometers, twice the engagement range of older Nassam's interceptors. That transformation changes the geometry of defense. With AMRAAM ER, Nassam's can now cover larger zones, protect more assets with fewer launchers, and engage higher altitude targets such as strike aircraft or loitering cruise missiles before they release their payloads. It also creates a tiered structure. The same system can employ both shorter range AIM-9X sidewinders for point defense and long range AMRAAM ERs for outer coverage. But again, the economics bite. Denmark's $951 million ceiling makes each AMRAAM ER cost roughly 4.02 million per unit. By comparison, the Danish NASAM's batteries themselves, the launchers, radar vehicles, and command posts cost about 500 million in total. That means missiles alone account for nearly two thirds of the entire investment. To put that in perspective, when Poland purchased AM-9X missiles for NASAMs, each cost around $740,000. If Denmark were to buy a similar number of sidewinders, it would spend another $175 million. So why commit nearly a billion dollars to 236 missiles? The answer lies in deterrence and readiness. Denmark is not a large country, but its strategic geography is critical. It guards the Danish Straits, the maritime gateways linking the Baltic Sea with the North Atlantic. In any confrontation involving NATO and Russia, control of this corridor would determine whether Baltic allies could be reinforced or blockaded. For Copenhagen, protecting its airspace is not just national defense, it is a NATO responsibility, and that requires the ability to intercept threats before they reach the Straits or key airbases. Moreover, the AMRAAM ER purchase places Denmark among an elite group of operators. Only four nations, Hungary, Kuwait, Norway, and the Netherlands, had previously received authorization to buy this missile. Each of them is investing in layered air defense rather than static systems. In June 2024, the Netherlands secured 174 AMRAAM ERs for about $678 million, a unit price of $3.9 million. Norway's later deal for 100 missiles came in at $4.05 million apiece. The Danish contract aligns closely with those figures, showing a consistent valuation and strong demand. But beyond the numbers, this procurement hints at a larger shift in NATO defense philosophy. Instead of focusing on massive, strategic-level systems like the Patriot, smaller European militaries are turning to modular, scalable networks of medium-range defenses. NASAMS embodies that logic. It can integrate into national and NATO-wide command networks, share radar data, and even queue interceptors from remote launchers positioned tens of kilometers apart. In practice, that means Denmark can build an air defense web that is mobile, survivable, and interoperable with allied systems. 
Still, every strategic decision carries trade-offs. For the cost of 236 missiles, Denmark could have bought multiple additional NASAMS batteries or even invested in complementary capabilities such as counter-drone lasers or electronic warfare assets. Yet, as recent conflicts have shown, from Ukraine to the Middle East, quantity without range is often meaningless. Missiles like the Amram ER extend the defensive perimeter, allowing a small number of launchers to protect critical sites from saturation attacks. There is also the political dimension. By buying advanced interceptors from the United States, Denmark deepens defense industrial ties with Washington and demonstrates commitment to NATO's collective modernization goals. That is no small consideration in an era when Europe's security order is once again being tested. Technically, the Amram ER gives Denmark a missile that bridges the gap between traditional medium-range interceptors and strategic systems like Patriot Pac-3. It cannot reach as far as Patriot's 160-kilometer range, but its 60-kilometer envelope is sufficient for most regional threats, including Russian Su-34 strike aircraft and Iskander-launched cruise missiles approaching from the Baltic region. Combined with NASAM's distributed architecture, the Amram ER effectively turns Denmark into a regional air defense hub capable of integrating into NATO's broader integrated air and missile defense network. And there is one more subtle factor, readiness. The Amram ER uses existing NASAM's launchers and infrastructure, meaning Denmark can field the missiles quickly without waiting years for new hardware integration. That flexibility is invaluable at a time when Europe's arms industry is stretched and production queues for Patriots or SAM Putis extend well into the late 2020s. So what does this mean strategically? It reflects a paradigm shift in how nations calculate air defense value. In the 20th century, power was measured by how many launchers or batteries a country owned. In the 21st, capability is measured by the quality and range of the interceptors those batteries can fire. The missile has become the true currency of air defense. For Denmark, investing in the Amram ER is therefore less about prestige and more about resilience. It ensures that even a small NATO state can project credible deterrence across a significant portion of its airspace. It also reinforces a critical truth. Modern defense is not cheap, but neither is defeat. As other European nations evaluate their own modernization path, from Poland's layered Vistula system to Finland's integration of Israeli David Sling, Denmark's decision will be closely watched. The lesson is clear, range equals survival, and the cost of security will continue to rise as threats grow more sophisticated. In the end, the Amram Air is more than a missile. It is a signal that the next phase of European defense will be defined not by the number of systems in the field, but by how far they can reach and how fast they can respond. Denmark has made its choice. The question is, who will follow next?